Today, we're tackling one of the most feared topics in programming, pointers. If you've ever felt confused about what pointers actually are, why they exist, or how to use them without your program crashing, this video is for you. We're going to break everything down from the absolute basics to the tricky stuff that trips up even experienced programmers. Before we jump in, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're going deep today. And I promise by the end of this video, pointers will finally click for you. All right, let's start with the fundamental question. What is a pointer? And I mean really, what is it? Here's the thing. When you create a variable in your program, that variable needs to live somewhere. It doesn't just float around in the ether. Your computer stores it in RAM in a specific location, and every location in RAM has an address, just like every house on a street has an address. Let me give you a real-world analogy. Imagine you have a friend named Sarah who lives at 123 Main Street. Now, there are two ways you could interact with Sarah. You could go to her house and talk to her directly. That's like using a regular variable. Or you could write down her address on a piece of paper. That piece of paper doesn't contain Sarah herself. It contains information about where to find Sarah. That piece of paper, that's essentially what a pointer is. In C, when you declare a variable like this, the computer allocates some space in memory and stores the value 25 there. That location has an address. Let's say it's memory address 1000 for this example. Now, a pointer is simply a variable that stores that address. Let me break this down. The asterisk tells C that PTR is a pointer to an integer. The ampersand before age gets the address of age. So PTR now contains the value 1000, the address where age lives. This might seem pointless at first, why not just use age directly? Well, hold that thought, because we're going to see why pointers are actually incredibly powerful. Let's talk more concretely about memory addresses. Your computer's RAM is basically a giant array of bytes. Each byte has a unique address, starting from zero and going up to however much RAM you have. When you declare a variable, the compiler finds some free space in memory and assigns your variable to live there. The address is just a number. It could be Vausen, it could be 45392, it could be anything. You don't usually need to know the exact address, but what matters is that every piece of data has one. Here's a simple example. The first print shows you the value stored in X, which is 42. The second one shows you where X lives in memory. That percent %p is the format specifier for pointers, and the ampersand gets the address. Now here's something interesting. Different types take up different amounts of memory. An int typically takes four bytes, a char takes one byte, a double takes eight bytes. So if you have an int at address 1000, and right after it you declare another int, that second int would be at address 1004, not 1001, because the first int occupies addresses 1000 through 1003. Okay, so we can store addresses in pointers. Cool, but how do we actually use them to get to the data? This is where dereferencing comes in, and this is crucial to understand. Dereferencing means following the pointer to get to the value it points to. It's like following that address on the piece of paper to actually visit Sarah's house. In C, you dereference a pointer using the asterisk operator. Yeah, I know, the asterisk does double duty. It declares a pointer and it dereferences a pointer. Context matters. That second print F uses asterisk PTR, which means go to the address stored in PTR and give me the value there. Both prints will show 25, but here's where it gets interesting. You can also use dereferencing to modify the value. This will print 30. Even though we never directly touched the age variable, we modified it through the pointer. This is incredibly powerful because it means you can pass a pointer to a function, and that function can modify the original variable, not just a copy. Let me show you a practical example. Say you want a function that swaps two numbers. This works because we're passing the addresses of X and Y. The function can dereference those pointers to modify the actual variables in main. If we didn't use pointers, we'd just be swapping copies, and X and Y in main would stay unchanged. Now we get to something that seems weird at first, but is actually genius, pointer arithmetic. You can do math with pointers, you can add to them, subtract from them, compare them, but the math doesn't work quite like you'd expect. We start with PTR pointing to the first element of the array. Then we do PTR++. 
You might think this adds one to the address, but it doesn't. It adds the size of one int, which is typically four bytes. So if PTR was at address 1000, after PTR++ it's at address 1004. This is why pointer arithmetic is so elegant. You don't have to think about byte sizes. If you have a pointer to int and you add one, it moves to the next int. If you have a pointer to double and you add one, it moves to the next double, even though that's eight bytes away. You can also do subtraction. This moves the pointer backwards by two integers. Here's a really important point. Arrays and pointers are deeply connected in C. When you write R, the compiler actually treats this as asterisk open parent R plus two close parent. Array indexing is just pointer arithmetic in disguise. You can even write this. Both of these print 30, the third element. Mind blowing, right? All right, now we need to talk about the dark side of pointers, the errors, the crashes, the segmentation faults that haunt your dreams. First up, null pointers. This is probably the most common pointer error you'll encounter. A null pointer is a pointer that doesn't point to anything valid. It has the special value null, which is usually defined as zero. You use null pointers to indicate that a pointer isn't currently pointing to anything useful. This is fine. The problem comes when you try to dereference a null pointer. Your program will crash. Why? Because you're trying to access memory address zero, which the operating system specifically protects. You can't read from or write to address zero. This seems obvious when written out like this, but in real programs, it's easy to accidentally end up with a null pointer. Maybe a function returns null to indicate an error and you forget to check for that. The fix? Always check. Make checking for null a habit. It'll save you hours of debugging. Now let's talk about something even more insidious, dangling pointers. This is when a pointer points to memory that's no longer valid. This happens most commonly in two scenarios. First, when you have a pointer to a local variable and that variable goes out of scope, what's wrong here? The variable x only exists while get number is running. Once the function returns, that memory is freed up for reuse. The pointer PTR now points to memory that could contain anything. Maybe it still has 42 in it. Maybe it's been overwritten with garbage. Maybe accessing it causes a crash. This is undefined behavior, the worst kind of bug because it's unpredictable. The second common scenario is with dynamically allocated memory. After you call free, that memory is returned to the system. The pointer still contains the address, but that address is no longer yours to use. Accessing it is undefined behavior. The fix for the first scenario is to use dynamic allocation. Now the memory persists after the function returns. Just remember to free it eventually. The fix for the second scenario is to set the pointer to null after freeing. Now if you accidentally try to use PTR, you'll get a predictable null pointer error instead of undefined behavior. While we're talking about dynamic memory, let's cover two more common errors. A double free is when you call free on the same pointer twice. The second free is trying to free memory that's already been freed, which corrupts the memory management system and usually causes a crash. Again, setting pointers to null after freeing helps prevent this. On the flip side, we have memory leaks. This is when you allocate memory but never free it. Every time this function runs, you lose 4,000 bytes of memory. Call it a million times and you've leaked 4 gigabytes. Eventually, your program runs out of memory. The rule is simple. Every malloc needs a corresponding free. If you allocate it, you must deallocate it. Sometimes you need a pointer that points to another pointer. This is a pointer to a pointer declared with two asterisks. Why would you ever need this? A common use case is when you want a function to modify a pointer itself not just the value it points to. We pass the address of my array to the function. Inside the function, we dereference it once to get to my array itself, then assign it a new value. This allows the function to change where my array points. We touched on this earlier, but let's dig deeper into the relationship between pointers and arrays. When you declare an array, the array name acts like a pointer to the first element. You can use pointer arithmetic to navigate the array. This is exactly equivalent to. However, there's a subtle difference between arrays and pointers. An array is a fixed location in memory, while a pointer is a variable that can be changed to point elsewhere. Also, size of behaves differently. All right, we're getting into advanced territory now, function pointers. 
These are pointers that point to functions instead of data. Every function in your program has an address in memory where its code lives. You can store that address in a pointer. The syntax is weird, I know. You read it as functpanier is a pointer to a function that takes two ints and returns an int. You can call the function through the pointer. Why is this useful? It allows you to write flexible code where behavior can be customized at runtime. For example, you could write a sorting function that takes a comparison function as a parameter. This lets you reuse the same sorting code with different comparison logic. Let's talk about const with pointers because this trips people up. There are actually three different things you can do with const. Pointer to constant data. You can change where the pointer points, but not the data. Constant pointer. You can change the data, but not where the pointer points. Constant pointer to constant data. Neither can change. The trick to remember, read from right to left. Let me rapid fire some pointer wisdom at you. Always initialize pointers. Don't leave them uninitialized. Instead, be careful with pointer comparison. You can compare pointers to see if they point to the same location, but comparing the values they point to requires dereferencing. Watch out for off by one errors with pointer arithmetic. Use tools like valgrind to catch memory errors. Seriously, this tool has saved me countless hours. It detects memory leaks, invalid memory accesses, double freeze, and more. Before we wrap up, let's talk about why you should care about all this. Why not just use a higher level language that hides all this complexity? First, understanding pointers makes you a better programmer in any language. Even languages with automatic memory management have references and objects that follow similar principles. Second, pointers are essential for efficient programming. They let you work with large data structures without copying them around. They enable you to build complex data structures like linked lists, trees, and graphs. Third, if you ever work on systems programming, embedded systems, game engines, or operating systems, pointers are unavoidable. These domains require direct memory manipulation. Fourth, pointers teach you what's really happening inside your computer. They pull back the curtain on how memory works, and that knowledge is invaluable. All right, we've covered a lot today. We started with the basics, what pointers are, how memory addresses work, and how to dereference pointers. We explored pointer arithmetic and its elegant relationship with arrays. We covered the common errors, null pointers, dangling pointers, double freeze, and memory leaks. And we even touched on advanced topics like function pointers and const correctness. The key to mastering pointers is practice, write code, make mistakes, debug those mistakes. Over time, your thinking in terms of pointers becomes second nature. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more programming content. Drop a comment if you have questions or if there's a topic you'd like me to cover next.